and join Magenta. When it uh, was created, uh, the conditions of the Big Bang, it attempted to answer fundamental questions of our universe, and it was hailed as one of the most significant scientific experiments in history. Well, now, the Large Hadron Collider is getting a new piece of kit. Scientists described it as an upgrade comparable from going from a Morris Minor car to a Formula One car. So, what exactly is it? Well, Simon Jolly is a particle physicist at University College London. He joins me here in the studio. Thank you so much uh, for being here with us. So, what, what exactly is this bit of kit? There are a number of stages to the vast accelerator complex at CERN. The Large Hadron Collider is the largest of all of them, but you have a number of different particle accelerators from small to medium to large to feed into that accelerator. The part at the very start is called the injector. So you have a linear accelerator that takes hydrogen from hydrogen gas, extracts protons, and then accelerates them up to a reasonably high energy to inject into one of the first accelerator rings. What CERN have done is they have built a new injector, a new linear accelerator called LINAC-4 that will replace the current one called LINAC-2 in order to increase the amount of protons that you can inject into the Large Hadron Collider. And I quoted it there. When people say that it's, it's a leap forward from Morris Minor to Formula One car, are, are they right? Is it of that magnitude? The technology has come on in leaps and bounds, as one would expect, for uh, frontier science. Um, LINAC-2 dates back to the 1970s, so the technology that's been used for LINAC-4 is considerably more advanced. Uh, it allows you to control those proton beams much more precisely, and uh, uh, also gives you control over m much greater quantities of protons, which is what you need for investigating the, the experiments that they have on the Large Hadron Collider. We'll come to what they hope to learn in a moment or two, but I mean, there's been so much excitement over the years over this project, the Large Hadron Collider and uh, Higgs boson. Remind us what they actually discovered here. The um, Higgs boson had been predicted for decades. Um, it's part of what we call the standard model of particle physics. So we have a theory that describes how subatomic particles interact, how um, uh, particles bind themselves together in, in atoms, and then how they interact with one another. The missing piece was this particle called the Higgs boson that, that Peter Higgs and um, colleagues in, in, in Belgium predicted. Um, what it does is it ties together a number of the forces in the standard model. So uh, electromagnetism, which is light and electricity, uh, and also uh, the weak nuclear force, which tells us about radioactive decay. The difficulty is in the theory, you can't say why some particles have mass and others don't. The Higgs boson gives you a way to resolve that. So this leap forward, what do they hope to learn from that? So what you need to do in order to study the Higgs boson is more collisions, more protons. You need billions and billions of these protons collisions in order to is see... Is it numbers or speed that, they, that, it's that, that, that is the key? It's numbers. Purely, it's raw horsepower. It's more protons and more protons. So the kind of experiments they're doing are exactly the same. But what you're hoping to do by colliding larger, denser bunches of protons is get more interesting particles out. So the more protons you have, the more you can see. Just a final thought, because you came up with a lovely line uh, talking to our producer saying nature is tricky to understand every time you peel back a layer the universe presents you with something else that you don't understand that's absolutely true it's why when um, eminent colleagues like professor Stephen Hawking say that uh, we might just be around the corner from having a theory of everything in my experience that hasn't been the case every time we reveal something that we didn't know before, suddenly there are more unanswered questions. So we found the Higgs boson, but we don't know much about it. How do we measure its properties? How does it then interact with all the other particles that we've already seen? Um, those are the kind of questions that we're constantly trying to answer. Well, thanks so much for coming in and explaining all of that. Thank you very much 